Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a quick and easy DIY headboard with a removable slip cover. First things first, you will need to measure how big you'd like your headboard to be based on your bed setup. So I wanted ours to overhang the bed slightly at either end, so I've added some extra centimetres on to that width measurement. I've listed all the measurements that I've used for our king size bed down below in the description box, but it's your headboard, so you can choose exactly how high and how wide you'd like it to be. And depending on your bed, just bear in mind that your headboard can either sit on the floor or on your bed frame, as ours will. Right, we're going to be using plywood for the main base of the headboard, and we're opting for the 12 millimeter thickness. Once you have your plywood base, you'll need a few other items to create your headboard. Fire retardant wadding, muslin, and your chosen fabric. You'll also need some sharp scissors, a staple gun and some staples, and something for sewing, whether that be a machine if you have one, or just a needle and thread to do it by hand. You'll need to cut your wadding to size first, so I'm laying down my plywood base and laying the wadding over the top, making sure that the wadding extends further than the edges of the plywood so that you have enough wadding to wrap over the edges to staple onto the back. I'm using pretty thick wadding, so I bought enough to have two layers so that it's nice and padded. I've cut one layer of wadding slightly larger than the other because it will need to be layered and there needs to be enough to go over the edges of the plywood and that first layer of wadding. Once both wadding layers are cut to size, it's best to lay the wadding down, the larger one first with the smaller one on top and then lay the plywood on top of that. Starting with the smaller layer of wadding, pull that up and over the edges of the plywood and staple into place. You could spread out your staples to begin with so that the wadding is in place and then add additional staples later. The corners can be tricky as you don't want them to be folded over and bulging with extra wadding. So I staple right up to the corners and then cut off the excess wadding afterwards. With any that's still left in the corners, I then just fold it up and compress it as best as possible and then staple it to make it neater. It really doesn't have to be perfect looking because it's on the back and it will also be covered with the cover eventually, but the main thing is to avoid corner bulkiness. Once the first layer of wadding is stapled into place, then repeat with the second layer, again paying attention to those corners to avoid extra bulk. If you have longer staples, you may want to swap to those for this layer because you will be stapling through a thicker surface. Now the two wadding layers are attached, it's time for the muslin cloth layer. Doing the same as before, placing that down on the floor first and then laying the headboard, padded side facing downwards on the top of the muslin. Using the same process as the wadding, pull the muslin cloth gently over the edges and staple into place. Muslin cloth is very thin, so try not to overstretch it. And once I have a couple of sides stapled, I then stand the headboard up so that I can manipulate the fabric a little easier when stapling the last edges into place. Now the muslin layer is really important when having a removable cover because it will enable your cover to be pulled on and off without catching and or damaging the fluffy wadding. Now at this point you could either staple your chosen fabric onto your headboard in the same way as the wadding and the muslin cloth, but I'm going to be making a removable slip cover for our headboard. The advantage of a removable cover is that it can be washed and you could even make seasonal covers which can be interchangeable. Now, the most important thing to do before making your slip cover is to wash your chosen fabric first. I can't stress this enough. If you don't wash it, this could result in shrinking whenever you did choose to wash your headboard cover in the future. Now on to making the cover. First, re-measure your headboard now with the wadding as it will have grown in size. Once you have those measurements, you'll want to add on some extra for the French seam. I'm going to be doing a one inch seam and I'm also adding on three centimeters extra for the seam allowance and to account for the thickness of the headboard. Again, all my measurements are listed down below in the description box. You'll need two pieces of fabric the same size. Once you've cut those to size, place those fabric pieces together. If you have a patterned fabric, make sure that your pattern, aka the front of the fabric, is facing inwards. You're then going to need to sew the sides and the top of the two fabric pieces together. 
Once done, cut diagonally along each of the corners so that your corners will fit nicely. Next, turn your cover inside out. So again, if you have a pattern fabric, the pattern will now be on the outside. And then iron along the seams so that they lie flat. Now pop your slip cover onto your headboard. It should be a little bit baggy at this point because you haven't created the French seam yet. Pin along both sides and at the top so that you now have that flap of fabric which is even all around the headboard and that will create your French seam. As per my measurements, the flap will measure roughly one inches, even all around both sides and the top of the cover. You will also see how much excess fabric you have at the bottom of the cover, so this can be turned up and pinned into place so that it can be hemmed to make that bottom section neater. Remove the cover, leave exactly how it is, so don't turn it inside out, and sew both your bottom hemline and, in my case, the one inch seam around the top and the sides of the cover. Remember, when approaching those top corners, you don't want to sew all the way to the edge. You need to leave the same gap all the way around. So here, it's one inch. You can then either iron your cover before fitting or steam once it's on your headboard base. Our headboard sits on top of our bed frame, so here sliding that into place for the finished result. I've outlined the costs of our headboard below in the description box along with the measurements for your reference and links to all of the items I used to make this headboard. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.